Hey everybody, it's Andy. Welcome back. Part three, my job interview communication workshop. Again, we're in the middle. It's free. It's live. It's four days. You're in session three. Let's talk about where we've been and where we're going. If you're just joining us, hello. If you've been with me for the last week or so going through this workshop, great to have you back. We're live here on a Tuesday. A week ago Tuesday, I did session one, which was on building rapport. Uh, we came back a couple days later on Thursday. We did a session on building your confidence, especially when you don't know the answer. Today, we're going to talk about body language, a little bit more about that in a second. And then in a couple days, we're coming back to cap it off with how to give a presentation. All four of these shows tie together in basically the non-verbal and, and kind of verbal light communication skills that you need to build, call them soft skills, interaction skills, interpersonal communication skills, whatever you want to whatever you want to call them. These are the kind of things that will push you over the top. Promise it. All right, so if you're here with me live, get in the chat. Tell me where you're from. Tell me what you need. If you are in one of my programs, make sure to let me know that using a hashtag and the program name and make sure to put some question marks in front of your questions. You can ask me anything you want. Uh, much like we did the last couple of shows, we're going to try to be thematic about this. So we're going to place a little more emphasis on the job interview communication related questions. But you can ask me anything you want because I'm going to try to be as generous as I can with my time, get as many of those questions answered as possible. All right, now we're gonna talk about body language today. And while this is a session on body language in an interview, what I'm going to tell you, you pretty much can use for the rest of your life in any interaction that you want, uh, especially if, you know, throughout your career or when you're meeting people for the first time, I got it all covered. I got it all covered. And I, I, I do have my note cards today. And I wanna say, I think, I, I don't know if you can actually see that, I think I set a record for the number of note cards that I have. I want to make sure I call out everything that I want you to know. And I also wore this crazy shirt. So, you know, when I do my arm movements, you, you can kind of see the difference between my arms and my big orange chest. And wait for it. Yes, Halloween's coming up. So happy pre-Halloween, everybody. Okay, let's talk about really what this is all about. Mm. I don't know if you know who Albert Morabian is, but he has a very famous, uh, I think it's called the Rule of Personal Communication. And there is a, 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 a number, they've done a lot of surveys and a lot of science behind this. I didn't make this up, I just took it from him, uh, where it's called the 738-55 rule. And here it is, and this is why today's session is so important. 7% of your communication is based on your words, 38% based on your tone or your voice, 55 based on your body language. And for all you mathematicians out there, that basically 93% of this transmission is not related to what I'm actually saying, but a combination of all of these things. So I think it's important that you recognize that. That goes for anything, one-on-one -on -one interaction. It goes through when you're communicating with a group, when you're listening, right? Think about that. I, I think I mentioned uh, last week, we had an entire session in my Leadership Monthly Live program on listening and how this rule affects that. So it's, it's, it's vitally important. Now, I'm gonna give you a talk and take you through the four phases of the interview. So basically, when you greet somebody, when they are asking you questions, when you get an opportunity to ask them questions, and then when you leave, that basically covers all four of the sections uh, as, as far as really where you need to be mindful of your body language. But what I also want you to know is that as I go through the things that I would recommend that you do at each stage in the process, I want you to keep these things in mind. There are really seven aspects of body language or, or language body language related things that you need to keep in mind. One of them is your face. One of them is your body. One of them is your gestures, so all your movements. The other things are your eyes touching, right? Like handshaking, hugging, all that good stuff. Your voice, your tone, and then the proximity, the space at which you are distant from them or connected to them. 
So all of these things we're going to try to cover. I'm not going to keep going through and repeating all seven of these at every step at every stage, but I want you to know that I factored all seven of these basically body language communication components that you need to be mindful of as you go into the interviewing process. Now, I don't want you to get overwhelmed and I, I, I don't want you to try to remember all the things that I'm telling you. I just want you to, really a lot of this talk is going to just be reminders. It might open your eyes to a few things uh, that could be misconstrued. Most of it I think is going to be obvious, but some of it will not be. And I want you to just kind of follow me through and I think it will be very easy, easy to retain. All right, let's talk about this. So when you start the interview, when you greet somebody, let's talk about this. This might be obvious, but I am, I am just dumbfounded at the number of people who don't do this when they meet somebody, right? You smile. It makes friends, right? Make sure that you are smiling and you are giving off that warm and welcoming look, right? It will also, you kind of get back what you give off, but smiling is, is very important. Now, here's another thing. There are various ways that you might be interviewed. You might be escorted into somebody's room or an office or a conference room where a person or a panel is waiting or a whole collection of things, people on the speakerphone, people on the video, all that good stuff. Or you might be in a situation where you are stationary and they are moving people in throughout the day. Regardless of the situation, just make sure that as you're smiling, you stand to greet the person. I don't care if they walk in and you're sitting down and you are not fast enough to get out of your seat and they slide into a chair, but you want to make sure that you rise. This is incredibly important. Rise. I don't care what you are doing. Make sure you are standing when you greet them. This is very, very important to make the connection. And there's another big etiquette thing that goes along with you rising is you should be shaking hands. Now, a couple things on this. Whenever you shake somebody's hand, you should be upright and vertical. If you're not, you're basically saying to them, it's not worth it for me to stand to shake your hand. You, you, you're not worthy. It's actually quite disrespectful. Now, I do want to make a mention because we get this question from time to time. Well, I'm from a country where it's inappropriate to shake somebody's hand or I'm a female. I can shake another female's hand, but it can be misinterpreted in my country if I shake a male's hand. I want you to just subscribe to whatever your, you know, your country's culture is if you are cross-cultures, all right? You're cross-cultures. You're from a country that does not shake hands. You're in the United States or somewhere where they do, and you are a female, and there is a male or something of that nature. Simply say, I would love to shake your hand, but it is against my whatever, or it's prohibited by my religion, my whatever it might be. Uh, just, But I think it's better to be up front. It might even be something that you want to mention before you get there. So I know I know shaking hands can be a big deal. It may, it may be just matter of fact for some of you, but it might be a huge deal for, for others. So I just wanna, I wanna call that out. And then, oi, introduce yourself. Do not think for one second that they know who you are. So you wanna say, hey, great to meet you. My name's Andy Lasavita. Your full name. You wanna know why you wanna say your full name? Because not everybody is, is named Carly Smith or something that's easy to pronounce. La Civita, do you have any idea how many people get that wrong? So I wanna make sure that I'm putting them at ease, I'm giving them my full name, I would like theirs in return. So as you're shaking hands, you're greeting, you're sharing your full name, they now have your pronunciation, so and if they're really smart and they didn't catch it, they will ask you to repeat it, which is what I would do to make sure that I got it. And then I would actually repeat your name just to make sure it registers. What I'd also like you to do is make sure that your tone is positive and authoritative, right? It should be warm, it should be welcoming, it should be sturdy. There should be nothing cowering about it. This is very important. Just think about that, that red card I flashed about the 
of the communication being the tone in your voice. So you wanna make sure that you, that you have that. And then I sort of alluded to this already, but you should repeat their name. Why? Well, a couple reasons. You might be meeting with one person, you might be meeting with multiple people, but you wanna make sure that number one, you are registering it with in your in your own mind. Nothing is more embarrassing and nothing will get you bounced faster than you calling somebody the wrong name, right? The Robs, the Rons, the Jills, the Jens, the whatever. I mean, it, 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 it's easy to slip. You don't want to. The other thing, people love the sound of their own name, even if they don't like their name. Okay, so, so it's good for you to do that. It's good for you to register it that way. You get double points for that. Make sure to repeat their names. Then, here you go. Then sit back down. So you did all of that while you were standing. Did all that while you were standing. None of that, it's gonna lose its power if you're sitting down while you're doing that. So make sure to stand. Big, big part of the body language, keys. Okay, then sit back, then sit back down. Okay, that is just the greeting. Now, string it all together really fast, right? Get up out of your chair, walk over to them, Hi, my name's Andy Lasavita. Great to meet you. Shake their hands. You are Jill, Jack, whatever. And, and just and repeat them. Now, they are going to start asking you questions. Okay, this is, and by the way, this is for most people, right? This is how most interviews are done. They're usually done sitting down most of the time. They're going to start asking you questions. Mama always said, sit up straight. Okay, it is, it is important. And as a matter of fact, I kid you not, I don't even sit on a chair. So we're doing this, I'm sitting on a Swiss ball, kind of a nice one, in fact. So I'm used to sitting up straight. If you are somebody that is used to slouching, you know, like this, all the time, it might be a good idea for you to practice sitting up straight before you go to the interview. Because what happens if you're slouching? What do you do? You, you lean on the table, sometimes you lean back, you're doing all kinds of stuff that has negative connotations. Sit up straight. You probably never thought we were gonna talk about that for 45 seconds. Okay, now, when you're listening, smile again. Not fake smile, just I'm receiving, I'm on alert, it sounds good. I like what you're asking me, even if I don't like the question, even though if I think that that's a silly interview question. Doesn't matter, it takes no effort to do this. It actually takes less effort to smile than it does not to smile or frown. All right, I like this one, just mildly nod. Just make sure that they're, you know, I'm with you. Don't, you don't need to do this like you don't need to be head bobbing, uh, but just kind of, you know, slow and steady, give them the smile. I got you. I'm, it's registering. What you're saying is registering. I'm getting it. I'm not having to repeat it right now, but I'm nodding, nodding, nodding. I got you. Okay. So that's, that's an important one. And eye contact is vital. It's vital. You need to be looking at them. Now, I understand that there's a lot of you that are superb listeners who don't need to look at whoever is speaking to you and, and, and you're going to get it. But in an interview, interviews are not about reality, right? They're not about reality. They're about perception. What do, what do I always talk about in interview intervention, right? It's, it's, it's communication transfer. It's, per, it's, it's the interviewer's perception, registration of what it is that you said, not what you said, their interpretation of what you said. Same thing when you're using nonverbal uh, cues, right? It's their interpretation. So eye contact helps them believe you are listening. You can use your hands. Don't be stiff. Okay, you sh in fact, you should use your hands. I'm not talking about all kind of wild and crazy, crazy gestures. Just don't, you, do, you just want to be natural. You just don't want to be a robot. You don't want to lean on the table, lock your hands on the table. You just want to use them naturally. And here's a couple things about your hands. They should be in sight and if possible, your palms should be open as much as possible. Don't get, don't be like a freak and, you know, be doing this, but just, you know, this is open. If you can see, you know, this is open. This is not, right? This, don't, 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 don't cross your arms and don't point at them. Pointing two things is okay. You know, making hand gestures is okay. Don't point at them and don't, whatever you do, don't cross your arms ever in an interview, ever, never, ever. 
it 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 uh, you know you might see those professional pictures. Prob- I've probably taken one. You know where they talk about you know doing this and all that stuff. And if your hands are above your arm, you know you're open. And if your hands are below your, just stay away from arm folding. It's closed off. Okay, it's 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 it has no business being in any kind of positive interaction. Now here's another thing. Proper empathy face. This is important. If they are sharing something about their organization uh, when they're asking you questions or when you're more likely asking them questions. I could put this in either one. You want to make sure that you have the proper empathy face, right? If they're telling you that something went wrong, there's nothing wrong with, ooh, that, you know, that kind of hurts. You don't want to be smiling when they're talking to you about a disaster and how they tanked it last year, which is why you're sitting there and they're trying to hire you. So just make sure that you're using the proper face so that they get that you are actually receiving the message and that you are, in fact, an empathetic person. Empathy is a big, big success factor in just about every job in the world. So I would I would make sure that you are mindful of what that looks like. Okay, you 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 really need to be able to do that. And when they're asking you questions, even when they're asking you questions, it is okay to take notes. It's okay to take notes at any point throughout the interview. It really is. I get asked this question a lot. It's okay to take notes. Uh, You might want to, you know, they might be asking you a question. You might want to jot something that you don't want to forget. That's totally okay. Uh, But but don't don't like lose the eye contact with them by looking down and locking in on your paper. Um, Just hand scratch something to yourself that you might want to make sure that you include in a story that might be a lengthy story that you need to tell. So that's okay. All right, now, you get a chance to ask your questions. Uh, I'm going to take a sip of this delicious water. Mm. It is A-O-K not only to write out your questions and type out your questions and bring in your research and do anything you want in the way of collateral. It is okay to look at your notes. It's a sin not to. Okay, so there's, I actually, there's no way you can have an interview with me Ask me everything that you need to ask me and not look at a note. And if you did, I would be virtually certain that you were going to miss something. So it's okay to look at your notes. When you do look at your notes, you want to make sure that you are not reading your notes. You are actually looking down. Oh, I know what that question number 10 is. I need to ask you about this. You look down at your you look down at your list, you glance at it. You do not need to read the whole thing to yourself cuz you already know what that question is. You're just looking down at your notes to make sure that you got the question you want to ask them. So, you want to make sure you look down, glance really fast, look you look down, you look up. It should only take you a second. And there should be I would lay your notes out in a manner that allows you to do that. Okay, so that's that's very important because the eye contact is important and when you ask a question, you most of the time should be smiling because you are interested, right? This is a great, great question and I'm excited to, to get the information. Now, not a fake smile. These don't need to be like joker smiles or anything. It just needs to be a little bit of a smile. Those lips should be going up at the corners and then I like to lean in a little bit this is a lean. That that's a lean, right? That's it, I don't. You don't have to do this, but you want to make sure that that's your cue. That I'm there. I'm present with you. I'm not doing anything funky with my arms. I'm not crossing them, right? I'm not leaning back. I'm not doing any of that stuff. And actually, when you when you engage with somebody, it's better to just slightly move forward to them. Okay, you got to be mindful of the proximity, but hopefully, you've got a reasonable level of space in in between you. And you know, yes, there's umpteen different things that can occur if you got people sitting to your side, or if you got people across from you with the table and configuration looks like. Don't sweat it. The point is just it is a way to show them that you are engaged. Use the proper tone to ask your questions. Very, very important. Very important. I'm gonna give you two examples. One is a very popular question I get asked almost every week. Okay, the first one is when you are asking your questions, there are questions that you were excited to know. There are questions that you were eager to ask, right? You did your homework. You might have even planted some of this in the rapport building portion when you first came in, 
right? And you use some of those rapport building tactics that I'm not going to go into, but that I gave you a whole lesson on a week ago. So when you, right, you're planting seeds, I'm really excited. When I get a chance to, to, to ask you some questions, I'm really interested in whatever. So when you actually get to ask the questions, you want to be enthusiastic. Okay, I couldn't wait to ask you this question. You know what? I noticed, and as I looked up on this report, and I noticed your distribution across these portfolios were, I'm I'm really interested to know what your market strategy is to blah, blah, blah. So it just, you want to make sure that you are using an excited tone. You don't need to be over the top. It's just an enthusiastic tone as opposed to, what do you all ask me about on Glassdoor? Hey, should I ask them about all those reviews that totally tanked their rating? Right, you asked me that. What should, should I bring that up to the employer? Hell yes, bring it up to the employer. The way you bring it up to the employer is what makes it work. So you went and you looked at Mile Walk and you said, oh my goodness, Andy, all these people, they, they tell me what a bad boss you are. What do you got to say for yourself? Well, that's not going to go over too well. But what if you did something like, you know, Andy, I, uh, I was looking at your company and I noticed that um, you know, I was just doing my due diligence and I know how these things go. I was looking at Glassdoor. I saw that there were uh, some mentions of some individuals who had a rough time in this department. I just as you know, I, as part of my due diligence, I just want to ask you your insight on this. You know, I I, I I take this in the proper context, but I'd be remiss if I didn't ask it. So I just I'd be curious what your take is on that. Right, so you've you've planted the seed that you it's a non-aggressive way. They won't have a defensive posture. You're letting them know you're sane and you're not going to blow it out of proportion and all that good stuff. So it's something like that. So it's 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 very important to use the proper tone when you're asking the question. This is very very important when you start to get into areas that are can be misconstrued. Okay, so you want to do that. You want to make sure that you take notes. Take notes, take notes, take notes. It's okay. But as you take notes, write, look up, engage, write, look up, engage, and so on. Okay, now you're leaving. Now I'm out of here, okay? Rise again, no matter what. I don't care. I don't care what they do. I don't care if they dare. Just get up as fast as you possibly can. Rise. Rise, rise, rise. If you're giving a presentation, maybe you're already standing. Just make sure you're standing. Okay, you want to again, similarly, almost in the same fashion, shake their hand, whatever is appropriate in your, uh, in your for your custom. You want to make sure you smile. I I mean, this may sound basic, but I cannot get over how many people don't do this. It's all in one fell swoop, and then what? Their names again. Make sure you got it right. Make sure you pronounce them correctly. You want to make sure you do this. Nothing is more impressive when you are able to pronounce a person's name that is actually unique. And they gave it to you once and you got it. They actually have tools on the internet. I even use them occasionally uh, because we have a lot of people that are outside the U.S. and some of the names are not familiar to me or the pronunciations are not familiar to me or there are multiple pronunciations for their names. And I go out and I say, how do you pronounce this name? I, I, I do that. So repeat their names. Make sure you got it. Don't, do, not, forget to thank them. Thank you so much. And there are a number of other things just tactically that I'd want you to ask them. But just make sure you thank them. Say, thank you so much. Really great to meet you. You know, I've got your information. I'm going to send you a little follow-up thank you. I really appreciate your time. All that good stuff. Do not forget this. I cannot get over how many people forget this? It's so basic. Just make sure you do that. All right, so not going to go through the whole list again. Now you got the do's. That was 25 of them. Let's go through the do nots. The do nots. Now you get most of these. I probably allude. Okay. Eye contact's important. Don't look at the ground. Don't look at the wall. Don't look at the window. Don't look away. Guys, whatever you do, her eyes are up here, that kind of stuff, okay? Just be professional and make sure you're not staring off into space. If you can, sit with your back to the window, to the glass wall, to the whatever. You don't want to be distracted. You would be best served looking at a white wall with some bland picture behind the person you're speaking with. Just make sure you're looking in the right spot. Don't pick at yourself. 
Okay, you know, I, I mean, I occasionally got to do one of these because I got an itch on my ear, but try not to pick at your clothes. Try not to, you know, do a lot of things that are twitchy and all that good stuff. Whatever you do, don't lean back in the chair, ever. Never, 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 just like never cross your arms. What happens when you lean back in the chair? Well, two things. Number one, you're, you're moving away from them. That's not good. Number two, you have the possibility of actually falling over. So we don't, we don't, we don't want to do that as few objects as possible. So bring your portfolio, bring your notepad, bring your pen, and everything else should stay in the brief bag. Your phone should be turned off, all that good stuff, no distractions. The exceptions are if you've done some research, you've got some write-ups, some other articles, things that you've looked at, things on their website, things that you want to use, that's okay to lay out. Just make sure that you can flip through it as you need to and you can do it quickly. You don't want anything being a distraction to them. Okay, so what I like to do is if, you know, I would bring a, a planner or a portfolio, whatever, I would have my papers inside and I would only grab them when I need them. So that's, that's really important. Proximity is important, so don't get too close. No fake smiling, okay? No fake smiling. And, you know, watch the blinking and all the extra twitching stuff. But those are just some obvious things. But it's, I cannot stress enough how important the body language part is. And, you know, what I didn't, what I didn't want to go into today, uh, but I, I think you get and I would apply. I'm guessing there's a question in there in the chat somewhere about, like, phone interviews and all that good stuff. We talked a lot about rapport, communication, those kind of things, or confidence last week. I would make sure to apply those to your phone interview. Uh, a lot of what I said here about your voice, your tone, your inflection, even your facial expressions when you're asking the question on the phone that calls for empathy, use an empathetic face. So it's, it, it's all tied together. Just the fact is that they can't see you. That should not matter because they can actually feel you. They can. They can. So I hope that serves you. Uh, that has a lot of cards and a lot of a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Okay, wait. A couple couple things really quick, just to get so as we transition here into the into the Q and A uh, section. And Kara is giving me some questions here to answer for you guys. Mm. So a couple couple things. I want to very quickly let you know that we have a job search boot camp uh, five weeks in a row live sessions every friday starting this friday i made mention of it last week i sent you a couple emails last week about the program what i want to do today is i want to spend like two three minutes and i want to just highlight a couple things to call out to you if you're not familiar with the program i'm i'm not going to make this super lengthy because i really want you to go and check the page out okay but i just i at least want to call out a few things that i think might entice you uh, with the program. I also, I do have a number of case studies that I want to share with you for motivation. I think they're related to a lot of the things that you guys asked me about. I'm not going to go right into those. I might take a bunch of questions, then sprinkle one in, and then take a bunch of questions and sprinkle one in. So, so let me do that. I want to switch here uh, to, to the, to the boot camp. We've got a phenomenal uh, sweet suite of uh, coaching sessions coming up. For those of you who are not familiar with the boot camp, this is my signature. Uh, it's my signature job search uh, program. There is a ton of assets in it, but I think it's 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 really uh, it really is an entire system and literally a system of systems that when you do them in order, as I've outlined, you'll attain great success. And so, you know, this, uh, you know, I'm not gonna read all this to you, but I just want you to know, it, there's, base, there's five base modules, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what those are, but there's every tool and template you can possibly imagine. There's lifetime access and ongoing support. So once you enroll in the program, you have it for life and you have me for life. So anytime you have a career related question, you can go into the boot camp and ask me. And you can also come back to the live sessions that we have throughout the year. Now we have a cluster starting on Friday, there's five of them, but we actually have about 25 to 30 of these 
throughout the year. And then there's there's live coaching. That's what I'm getting at. So four times a year, we do five weeks in a row. There are other times throughout the year where they're kind of our off months where we still get together a time or two and, um, and, and, and I answer your questions and I, and I do some teaching. Now, here are the different uh, sessions. The, the, this first one on, uh, on starting, this is probably one of two that I get the most feedback on about how helpful it was to truly do the self-discovery, to really understand what it is that you want, but also what is it that you've been doing wrong? It, it, whether that's the, the choices you've been making, and, and when I say wrong, I don't really mean wrong, wrong, but if you're looking for something, you're trying to find your dream job, you're trying to find the right career, you probably aren't doing the things that, it, that you need to do in order to attain it, or you've maybe made some poor choices in employers that you've chose or roles that you've chosen. This is going to cover all that. It talks about your headline it, and your pitch. It talks about your why, but most importantly, it talks about your needs and how to evaluate them. We do everything branding related. So all things marketing, that's your resume, that's all your cover letters, it's your LinkedIn profile, and then some. And then the other session where I get the most feedback is the searching session. Uh, this is really, or module, this is, this is where most of the people achieve success. It's not in putting the resume together. It's actually not even in the interviewing or the negotiating. It's in how to surface the right opportunity quickly and what you should do. Most people, I would say 90% of the people that I've met in my entire life and have who have enrolled in the boot camp and I've, I've met as, a, as an executive recruiter do this wrong. They do it wrong. It's just it's, and you're gonna you're gonna see some of the case studies. There's all things interviewing. There's all things to do throughout the entire process to give you the best negotiating leverage at the end of the process. Those are the five modules. You get an all access pass to the Mile Walk Academy. There's some other things that I want to call out. So some some of you say, well, I'm unique. I'm returning to work. I'm a military vet. I was a stay at home mom. I've got companies that were acquired, dissolved, uh, you know, all that good stuff. I've covered all of that in a separate resume module to go deeper. I also give you, you probably saw this in an email, if you opened your email the other day, that there are, uh, and networking is vital to your success. I have copywritten 10 templates that people are having great success with. They get very high response rates and, and a very high interviewing percentage rate. Um, but I also do other specialty things related to evaluating small and medium-sized companies, things you should be looking for, the types of questions you should be asking them and yourself. There's a whole separate uh, session on that. I also address critical, critical goals that some of you have, like career changing. I also have I've given you my entire 12-step methodology that I've used successfully twice. I also cover... Uh, if you are a more tenured worker or you are a senior executive, you face challenges that other people do not. What do you do? So there's a whole module on that. And then this one here is now becoming vital because uh, this is uh, uh, the time of year that we're we're in. So no, November, December, January, and February, these are the greatest months for you to find your dream job. They just statistically are. It doesn't. It, it makes no almost almost no difference what industry you're in. There are certain seasonal uh, industries. Those are also usually kicking in now as well. But it's. Uh, I give you all the adjustments that you need to make. It's really a powerful module. So you see all the good stuff. All these things working in tandem leads to success. It's self-paced, so if you enroll today, you could watch all of it before Friday and come to the session on Friday with all your questions if you wanted to do that. Uh, it's a great little app and all that good stuff. You, we do have some private groups. Uh, you do get the interview intervention ebook and audiobook. I am going to be taking this bonus away very soon. So this is an awesome awesome step in accelerating your career. So the Career Accelerator is another five module program that sells for $400 separately. Uh, in this promotion, it's going to be free, uh, likely for the last time, uh, because I'm gonna be including it in some other 
uh, programs as a bonus, or I'm going to be just selling it on its own for probably some time. But this is about when you get that job, making sure that you know what to do in the first 90 days, making sure that you know all the steps to uh, position yourself for promotion within the first year. I teach you about my idea generation methodology. This is the stuff that creates projects that move the needle. Uh, those people get promoted and, and, and not to mention have a lot more fun. And then I give you all my organizational tactics and all my performance review methods, tactics, interactions, the things, the data you need to collect and all that good stuff. There are a ton of video testimonials. So there you can spend 16 minutes watching those. Um, there's different packages that you can get. If you get the base package, you get everything I just mentioned. If you want a coaching session or a resume review, those are $500 each. You can buy them a la carte at any point. There's more videos. I give you a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you are an existing member and you've paid for career-related programs in the Mile Walk Academy, like the Resume Writing Masterclass or the Interview Intervention Course uh, or the Ultimate Career Course or whatever, you could use those to trade up. The leadership stuff is a separate high-performance curriculum that I have. That Those dollars do not apply, but we would give you credit. So if you've paid $97 or $297 for a program, you're only a couple of hundred bucks or so away. Here's the schedule of what's coming up, and then there's an accordion here uh, to help you answer some of your questions. But I hope you take a look at it. It's, uh, it's really going to be a lot of fun. The boot campers absolutely crush it, and I can spend another five hours showing you emails for all the people and all the happy dances that they've been doing. And I've been, I get them every day from people. And uh, I, I spent a, a lot of time this weekend looking through all the emails that, and that have been sent to me over the last few months. And, uh, you know, I had all a little tear party with myself and, um, but I just, you know, I'd love to support you on your journey. Take a look at the page you have until Friday at 11 central time to get it. All right, we'll talk a little bit more about um we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. Uh, but I want to get into some of the questions, but first I want to say hello to people. Um Evelyn O, Natalie Taylor, Connie Cotter, look at the boot campers right there. I love it. For all you boot campers, uh, whether you're already on to your new job or you recently joined the boot camp, share in the chat with, with what your experience has been. I'd love to, uh, you know, lo- love to have you chime in about that. And, you know, I don't want them to just take my word for it. Uh, Carrie Freeman, hey, Elizabeth, great to have you. Steve G, got denied, and so on. Okay, so great to have you. Tony P, another boot camper. Hanyan, great to have you. T.S., Deborah, sorry. Look at that, another boot camper, all kinds of interviews. And Faith has been binge watching my stuff and Brooke, another boot camper. Great to have all you guys. All right, Kara's gonna feed me some questions. I'm gonna go through a bunch and I'm gonna show you a little case study for a minute or two. All right, so Miss Clancy, hello from the left coast. Would like to know nonverbal red flags that interviewers notice. So Miss Clancy in my, uh, I guess my resume program, when those last things that I mentioned in the session about, you know, you're not smiling, you're not engaged, you're leaning back, your arms are folded, you're looking down, you look disinterested, you're, you know, objects are moving around, phones vibrate, any of those things are negative. So I would say make sure to stay away from the do nots that I just covered those to me are are biggies. Now the other things that you should do, the twenty, the first twenty five that I gave you, the do's, uh, I I would make sure that I do that. If if I walk into a room and somebody did not get up to shake my hand, dead, you're dead, you're dead. I don't even care what you say. That's literally how I feel about that. Just to give you an idea of what somebody might think, I think that's completely disrespectful. If you do not get up, you say your hands, you know, you're not worth it for me to rise to shake your hand. That would just, you'd pretty much be done at that point. You'd be in the biggest hole you could imagine. These are the kind of things that I would make sure that I do. And here again, I want you to accommodate for your particular culture, but still, 
you could still rise. You could still say, great to meet you. You could do whatever it is is that's customary for you. I don't know all the customs in the entire world, but I'm sure that if you're from that country, you would know the customs. All right. Cisco, I'm not a tall guy either, my friend. Any wisdom as it relates to body language? And yes, you are a new boot camper. Great to have you, my friend. Uh, no, I mean, no. I do everything I just told you, and I'm not tall. All right. Bohan, I always do that name repeating, but what if they get your name wrong more than once? Here's what I would do. Awesome question. Love this one. All right, so Bohan asks, I always do that name repeating thing when he's meeting somebody, he repeats their name, but what if they get your name wrong? Hopefully I got your name correct. Uh, I I hope I pronounced that correctly uh, more than once. Now, if you told me that I pronounced my name Bojan or Bohan or however you pronounce it, I would hope, hopefully the person would repeat it. If you've corrected them once, I would not correct them again. Okay, I would not correct them again. I would let them go. And if you are the only two in the interview, uh, you're just gonna have to ride it out. That's me. Now, some people would correct them again, but I feel like if you do that, then you know you're 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 probably putting off the interviewer and the interviewer him or herself is the one that really should be taking accountability for that but i would i would correct them once and that would be it and if you are in a panel uh review or interview then i would still correct them and hopefully some one of their own would correct them so that's the way i look at that okay kara is telling me that we have a lot of Questions on taking notes. I figured that there would be. All right, so Evelyn Oma, boot camper. I can be forgetful with names or mix up names. Is it okay to write their names down once you get through the steps, one through six, especially if they might not give you their business cards? Evelyn, I would, here's a little trick. I love this question. And yet the answer is yes. So if I, if I, okay, I, it, now you're, you're talking about like, if you're just meeting with one person, what I would say is I would, at the top of my paper, I would write the person's name down and I might say something like, you know, do you spell your name, you know, A-N-D-Y, A-N-D-R-E-W, um, how do you, you know, can I, I just want to make sure I got your last name, how do you spell it? Or something like that real quick. If, if you're in with like five people, that could get a little exhausting. Then I would just say, hey, I just want to make sure I got everybody's name and then just start writing it. So Carol, John, Bill, Bob, Terry. And then just, and then I would repeat it and then just something like that. And that would be totally okay. It really would. And if you remembered their last names, I would write them down. Now here's another thing. 90% of the time, you are going to know who you're going to meet with. Most of the time, most employers will email you their names. I would pre-write them down. Okay? So if, if, if you got five people that you're meeting with at once, and you write down all five of those people, and somebody swaps out, you cross that person's name out, you add whoever else comes in, or maybe no one else, no one additional comes in. But you could preload your paper that way. That's another good trick. So that's how I would handle it. That is a great question, Evelyn O. MMV, should I put my note on whatever I wanted to ask in plain view or hidden or take it out when it's the right time in plain view? So here's my view on questions. Now, when you say, should I put my note on whatever I want to ask, I'm assuming you are putting notes together about your questions. If they're your questions, it's totally okay. If they are open and in plain sight, I'm not hiding anything from anybody. This is the information I need to get. If anything, it shows that you're organized, you've made a list, you've done your homework. If they say something, because this happens quite a bit, right? They're talking, they say something, or they ask you something, but likely they're saying something to you in response to something that you've asked and you want to let them talk. What I do when they hit something that's like, ooh, whoa, don't want to forget to ask them that, I will just take my pen and I will, I will just make a quick note and I will look right back up. And I would not say I wrote something down because I didn't want to forget to ask you. What I probably would do is when they 
uh, when they were done, I'd say, you know, you said, and I, I, boom, tap my paper. You know, you said something interesting. Uh, I wanted to follow up on that. Now they know that's what you were writing. Totally okay. And that's smart because you didn't want to forget it. And you didn't want to interrupt them. You're getting points for that. I love that. I mean, when people do stuff like that to me, like that's, that's better than do you know how to code in this language to me. Like that stuff is cool. Because that's, that's the kind of life and interaction and, and, and career skill that you need to do. And you just said, I've got five things that you're going to love about me, right? I'm paying attention. I didn't interrupt you. I didn't forget what I, what I needed to. I followed up, right? I mean, all that stuff is great. So I love that. Stephanie Delaney, how, oh man, haven't seen you in a while. How you doing? I have heard you should ask permission to take notes during the interview. Uh, when you want to write responses for later activities like thank you notes, etc., Stephanie, you do not need to ask permission if you feel like you should. I wouldn't even ask permission. I would probably say something like, I hope you, you know, I hope you don't mind that I take some notes because I want to make sure that, you know, what you say is important. So I want to make sure to capture it. I, I wouldn't even, I would never apologize. And if somebody wouldn't let me take notes, you know what I would probably, I would like, because I'm a smart ass, I would probably say something like, well, how am I going to remember all that? Do you, you know, does every, does, are you, does everybody, is everybody expected to remember everything you say? So I, you know, that's kind of what I, that's kind of what I think there. So no, I don't think that's true. All right. Kara's telling me that Push Pesh is asking me, in your boot camp starting Friday, is there anything new for existing boot campers? All right, that's the first question. All y'all existing boot campers, here's what I would tell you. Number one, and this goes for you and everybody else who I hope joins the boot camp or is considering the boot camp. The boot camp has those five main modules that I told you, has about, about, not every single one, but about 90 minutes of straight teaching, 90, 90, 90, and one of them's 100, one of them's a little more, and that's just the base stuff, okay? And then all those other modules, those are all another hour each, like if you need them, you know, career changing and executive stuff and how to interview. Uh, I think those are like 30 minutes. The networking one's 30 minutes and so on. It's a lot of stuff to take in. So what I like to do at the at these live sessions, whether they're the five in a row blitz or whether they're the ones that are like once a month, like in December, we'll have a session. Uh, in January, we'll have another you know blitz starting later in the month. What I like to do is I do a couple things. I call your attention to the most important stuff. And so we, we, I, I say it again. You're getting it again. I'm going to say it a little differently to try to catch it and stimulate something else up there in the noodle, right? But the other thing that I do is as I continue to update my techniques in the program, I'm going to give you some different things to think about that are related to the main points. Now, at some point when I reshoot the whole boot camp, I'm going to roll that back in. But the like the five sessions that are coming up, we're going to talk about mindset and self-awareness in the first one. The ATS stuff that I'm going to talk about in the second session, push pesh is is deeper. So, it's it's way deep. It's how to it's how to make sure you don't get bounced from the ATS. And so we're going to talk prescription. That's new. And then we're going to talk about some other uh, uh, challenge related stuff and we're going to help you try to facilitate some buddy systems and some other stuff in the third session the fourth session on interviewing is going to be on some soft skills and the fifth session is going to be on how to handle multiple negotiations at the same time I have not gone through that in detail inside the main teaching but what's happening I'm not I'm kind of being funny and kind of not but boot campers are getting so many offers that one of the biggest questions I have is Andy I have so many offers I don't I'm like how do I do all this like how do I I don't want to lose that one literally and so we're going to do a teaching session on how to do that so it's um, because I actually feel like you all should plan for that. You should plan for success. If you think, well, I just need a job, well, I know it might feel like that, but trust me when I tell you that you deserve more than that and, and you likely will get more than that if you do what I show you. So so there for Push Pesh and everybody else. And Push Pesh has got another 
uh, question. In my country, which is India, making notes is not seen as a sign of intelligence in an interview. Do you still feel I should go ahead and do it? No, I do not. So if you are in a situation like this, I totally, totally concede to whatever your country's culture is. However, I would tell you that I do not see that as a sign of weakness. I see that as a sign of strength. I don't see kindness as a sign of weakness. I see kindness as a sign of strength. I see empathy as very strong. I see crying as very strong. I like, like, that's how I feel. So, you know, if you are in India and that's the culture and you have to put on a good face, then what I would do is I would rush out of there and I would start writing notes for everything that they said that was important for me to follow up on. But I will tell you this, if you spend an hour with me, there's no way you're going to remember everything I tell you. There just isn't, and I know it. And if you did, I'd be just shocked. I really would. Okay. Let me see. All right, Steve G. Actually, you know what? Before I go to Steve, I want to show you something. Um, speaking of ATSs, I'm going to show you Gabe. This is Gabe, and this is a boot camper. And so Pushpesh was asking me about, is there something uh, different that we are going to be doing in the boot camp? So uh, Gabe was a uh, technology guy in the boot camp. I love this email. Andy, I need to testify. I was so discouraged by the whole ATS thing and fell down the rabbit hole. He was. We actually, he went to the boot camp. We did, I did a resume review for him. And, and so um, this is, you know, th this is one of those things where, you know, he, he's going back and forth with me on the email. He was getting a little discouraged. And Uncle Andy here said, Get, you got to just got to stop that, man. Do not put your resume in an applicant tracking system. So he did. He said, I went back to the resume. You work, people spend the 500 bucks. That's the upcharge that I was, I was telling you about, that add-on service. But I stayed the course with the strategy, continued to build my network around my target company list, and boom, for sure. And this is what happened to him, right? He, he saw the posting got in there, but he, he, he went in through his network. And I can't stress this enough. You know, we had another, um, an, a, another boot camper and Tony is the same, same kind of thing where, you know, Tony, t what was really interesting about Tony was Tony came to these sessions, these live office hour sessions that I have or the workshop like this. He emailed me at least a half a dozen times going back and forth about how, uh, you know, how, are you sure this program's going to work for me? I'm an older guy. I'm at the end of my rope, all that good stuff. So when he got in, the first thing that we had to work on with him was his mindset. So I said, Tony, you got to step back. Forget everything you've done. I literally said, wipe it away from your brain and do nothing but go through the steps. And I want you to go through the steps slowly. Actually, slow and smooth is better. If you go through slow and smooth, smooth is fast. This is a marathon, not a sprint. You need to get yourself in order and you need to go through a little bit of a, 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 a mental detox because you're tired. So he said, okay. Then when he started to go through it, he found he was making some small, minor, but important tweaks. But then he said when he, no when he noticed them that this for him these areas that he didn't feel were important became very important. So he put the target company list together, which is something that I highly recommend that you do. I would stay away from the ATS at all possible. He says, I got it down to 10 of the 120, and I heard back from seven of them, and they were stumbling all over themselves. So he said, all right, so then when I went in there, I was feeling kind of good, so I asked for 15% over the maximum salary that they listed because we went back and forth. I said, Tony, no, you got to, you, he, he said, how should I negotiate? He said, you got to go, go higher. Just go, go way up above whatever they tell you the max is. Don't believe what's posted. So I just, I just want to stress this to you guys. For those of you that, that are not buying into what I'm saying about, about the networking, about pushing the envelope, about not negotiating up front, about getting in there and showing your worth, about using the tactics, these guys, and I, I've got some great ladies uh, to show you a little later in the, in, in the show, but 
um, you know, they're, 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 they're proof that this, that this stuff works. And so a big precursor to you being able to get into these job interviews is knowing how to do this, is knowing how to network, is using those networking templates, is making sure that you are consistently targeting the right companies, targeting the right people, and, and, and what can you can control? Your, your outflow of where you want to circulate your messages, your cover letters, your resume, and so on. And when you take control of your job search, it's a hell of a lot easier, not to mention it's easier on your soul because we, we, we tend to get unhappy when we don't feel in control. We feel like, well, the ATS isn't being kind to us or there aren't any postings at this company I want to look at. All that stuff is nonsense. Okay, it's nonsense, and I will get you to I'll get you to believe that these guys, for as reluctant as they were to change their ways, they did, and they they you know they 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 found their dreams, and I got some more to show you that are even more drastic than this. So, I hope that helps encourage you a bit, and let me get back and take a bunch of questions. All right, Steve G, back to my Canadian buddy. I got den a denied email from a recent interview I went on this past Friday. I replied and thanked the interviewer for her time. Is it appropriate to send a second email asking for feedback? So, a couple of things, and I, um, I'm going to be tight with this, actually, Steve, because we're actually going to shoot a video on this, but this is an awesome question. So, a couple of things. When you finish the, um, the, the interviewing process and you get rejected, I highly recommend that you watch my video on how to get the job after being rejected. So instead of replying with a thank you and asking for feedback, I would use the script I give you in how to get the job after being rejected. Every single one of you, the 140 of you that are on this session still, you need to go watch that. I don't care if you're in the process. I don't care if you're starting the process. I just want you to recognize what a successful blueprint in all its facets looks like and that is a tool that you need to have and you need to be ready to do don't wait until do not wait until you get rejected to watch it because it's going to give you some other ideas as well but at the end of the process you want to send that message which is a thank you message thank thanking them for their time you also it's another sales cover letter style of reiterating the fact that you do feel qualified, you were a great candidate, but you do respect their choice and you leave the door open. Okay. You leave the door open for your follow-up, which would be in about 30 days. Now, in general about the feedback, I never, never like to ask the feedback in an email. No, do not. It's a waste of your keystrokes. If you want to ask for feedback, the place I would ask for feedback is on the phone with them. If you do not get the opportunity to talk to them, I would not bother asking them. True, 100%. If somebody calls you and says, Steve, you were awesome. We simply chose somebody else because they had more skills and alignment, they had more technology experience, they had more customer service experience, whatever it was, that's fine. You have your feedback. The only kind of feedback I would ever ask for is what happened in the process. I would never ask for what should I have done better. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I want you to be you. You have the skills you have and all that good stuff. Maybe they liked you. Maybe they didn't. But I don't want you to change you based on their feedback. You're talking about people who've spent mere minutes with you and they're going to be able to give you solid gold feedback that you are going to go and then channel in and try to improve when the fact of the matter is somebody might say to you, Steve, well, I don't like it that you're open, honest, and brash. Well, you come and you want to work with me at Mile Walk. I like that you're open and honest and brash. That's an asset, not a, not a fault. Okay, so so you don't you don't know if you what you want the feedback you actually want is the feedback related to why didn't I get the job? That's different. We chose somebody else. We decided you were not a cultural fit. Fine. We decided um, that you needed a little more experience with this. We decided to change the position to that. All that stuff's fine. And the reason you want that feedback is because that feedback will tell you what to do with them not how to change yourself. 
meaning should I follow up with them in 30 days because they chose somebody else? Should I follow up with them in 60 days because they decided to put the position on hold? Should I, you follow me? Did I make a connection with the hiring official? Uh, tr tr true story, I think she's on here and I think I'm gonna get this, this right. Uh, we had a boot camper interview with somebody who then she got passed over and that person that she interviewed with went to a different department and then she reached out to that person again and then that person said, yeah, we'll, we'll get you in again or we'll get you to come back, right? So, so she hit it off with her, I think it was a her, but regardless, you get the point. The, having that knowledge that, hey, we just we chose somebody else because, but I really like you, or I think you're a great person and would be a great fit for the company. We just chose somebody a little stronger, or maybe your skills aren't up to speed quite yet. All that stuff's valuable to know because it's going to tell you how to proceed. I want you to know how to proceed, not what to change. Because listen, you want to work with me for a year and I will give you some feedback about how to grow your profession or whatever. That's one thing. You want to hire me as your career coach to assess you and give you feedback about what you need to do. That's fine. You want to go into an interview with somebody who practically doesn't know how to interview, has only spent minutes with you, and is going to give you feedback about what you need to change. No, don't do it. And most of the time, I didn't even add, you're not going to get honest feedback if it's real. Like if it's something personal. So there on that, my friend. Hope that serves you. Han Yin. Uh, I think I'm, um, I'm going to read this whole thing. Uh, I asked for feedback from my interviews and so far getting dead air. Not sure how to proceed. During the interview, I asked what they wish I had to, uh, what, I, what I wish I had to better fit the role and they all say I have great skills. I am stumped. Am I losing to internal referrals? I have no idea. Uh, how do I find out what I can do? I am not, uh, my recommendation is that organizations that behave this way where you're getting dead air and you're not getting responses and all that great stuff, they're just not the company for you. I would keep going, you know, I would keep going at it and I would try to make sure that I was engaging with companies who were interested in me. So I say this to everybody, you deserve it. I mean, Han Yin, you deserve it. Everybody else on here deserves a great job to be in a company that loves them. If you contact somebody and they're not treating you well, move on. If you're con if you're contacting somebody or getting through the interview process and you 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 meet with a boss who you really don't like, move on. Okay? If you're a college student and you're trying to convince somebody that they should take a chance on you when they're not mentally open to hiring somebody without experience, move on. Go find employers who are. So, what you can control is your non-stop looking for the right place. You can control the tactics that you take to do that. Okay, so you can surf my YouTube channel all you want. You can join a boot camp if you want or one of my other programs, but that's taking control. I would not be sweating the fact that these employers are not behaving well. They're just not for you. Think about what it would be like to work there. So you've got it. You've got it. Actually, you know what? I I I want to. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you one another one. Um, this woman was, is, uh, let me see, uh, her name's Laura, and she is 60. She gets let go, she's an executive level woman, super sharp, got it all going on, okay? But she's 60 years old, and she, uh, she got let go from one of the large media companies, she reached out to me basically in a panic. She said, Andy, I'm, at the time, I think she was like 59, just about to be 60, and said, you know, I'm a woman, I'm an older worker, I'm in media, which is rough. And she went through the boot camp. She then uh, enlisted for a coaching session with me. We actually physically got together. Uh, we sat, we had lunch together. So we got to, to get together face to face. And she went through the whole process and I said, listen, the, I spent half of the time making sure that she believed in herself and that she was worthy and that if she did what I said, she would find the right thing. And I told her to ignore this. I, I hope you write this down. Ignore every constraint you think is out there. 
you're too old, you're the wrong gender, you live in the wrong city. Every imaginable thing is, that's garbage. That, that That's doing nothing but holding you back. I want you to think about everything you are. I want you to do everything that I taught you in the boot camp as far as controlling your output. So what'd she do? She started searching for jobs all over the US, figuring if she, I said, if you're good enough, they'll let you work remotely. If not, maybe you can relocate your family and all that good stuff. Long story short, she gets a job out of New York. She interviews for a position that was was uh, listed. And then once she got in there, they completely revamped the position. And while they were initially going to have her move to New York, they are allowing her to live in Chicago. And we, we got to the negotiation part. I prepped from the Malawak stuff, interviewed, follow up. When it got to negotiation, higher base, guaranteed severance, sign-on bonus and a guaranteed bonus in the first year. Anything is possible, 60 years old. I'm telling you this stuff works. It was the worst time of year she was searching. Uh, it, you know, she'd missed, missed the wave, but, uh, but I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I, if nothing else, I hope you guys have confidence in yourself and that you will be patient to hold out for what it is that you want. I reconfirmed what was most important to me. If you go into these interviews, Hanyan and everybody else, you're not getting feedback. Well, is communication important to you? Is having an employer who is, um, who is honest with you and shares with you, is that important to you? Or do you want to be guessing constantly? Or do you want to be wondering what it is you need to do to get promoted? Why you're not getting promoted? Why you're getting moved out of this department? I mean, all that stuff is is, is vital. You need to be, you need to believe in yourself. And so I just I I I was hoping I had the opportunity to share her story today because I just I think it's sensational. And I have I have dozens and dozens and dozens of these that look like this. So believe me, I mean I have the evidence. It's out there. All right. Salary. I think I got a salary. Let's see. I put the link. Faith had a phone interview. All right, wait. I'm not, Kara, I'm not sure what you're doing here. Uh, I got a thing here. It says salary. I put link to video in the chat. Faith Prescott had, an, had a phone interview, and leading up, the boss sent an email stating salary. Oi. During the phone interview, also reiterated the salary and did not give and did not give time to respond it's low how and when do i address faith you don't address it at all you go all the way to get the offer and then you and then you hash it out there i would faith i think you're a new uh uh you found me a week ago the great first off faith prescott that's a great name love having you uh, what i would do is watch my uh my salary negotiation playlist it's the best stuff that I have out there for these types of questions, what to do, what not to do, how to go through the process, everything you think about it is wrong, all that stuff, it's all out there. But I would always wait until, for any of you, you negotiate. Negotiation is about leverage. It's about leverage. It's not about salary bans. It's not about any of that crap. It's not about what recruiters tell you. It is about leverage and who has it. You go through that interview process, you crush it, they need you, you show them that, you have the leverage. If you're in the screening call, you have no leverage. They don't know you at all. They have a piece of paper, right? They think they have leverage. So what they try to do, what employers try to do, is they think they have leverage because they, they stupidly think that everybody wants to work at their company. When the fact of the matter is that they should go right into sell mode the minute they have you on the phone, the minute they have you on an email any of that stuff and they never should discuss that but what they're doing is they're trying to plant a number in your brain well when you don't have any leverage and see if you bite and whatever and if you just say hey you know what i'm sure you got a budget for this you know i'm not really worried about the compensation right now and then you go through the process and you wow them and i have tons of stories where oh, wait we just got done with tony r who asked for 15 percent more than the highest salary that they listed and more PTO and all that other good stuff. So I think you I think you get my gist there. Connie Cotter, you only share 55% of your message with your dancing. We want 100% Andy guides. Connie, gave you all a head today, baby. One of my favorite boot campers and leaders and all around a great gal. All right. Brandon Detail Guy, I'm Will. 
Then why is your why is your handle Brandon Detail Guy? Will put your handle as Will. 60 year old guy, maybe I can introduce you to Laura. She can give you some tips. Who's getting back into the job market after health challenges? Thank you, Andy. You have helped me more than you know. Boom. Will. Love it. God uh, uh, God bless you. Lots of luck to you. And I hope I, you know, I hope you keep at my channel and in my community and all that good stuff. Hopefully you got the interview intervention book. I haven't really been talking about that, but it's free. Get that uh, as well. Alla, uh, or uh, I don't know if it's Alla or Alla. Hello, I need to change my career due to the change in my health situation and the connected limitations. Any recommendations? Yes, and I want to give you another story here too. As a as a career uh, as a career change motivation. So a couple of things, Alla. Um, oop. Uh oh. I think I just clipped off the wrong thing that I wanted to send you here. Um, give me one re one quick second. So I do I do have uh, I, I do I do have some <laughs> I, do have, I do have some recommendations and I can't believe I just did that. Hopefully this is gonna come up. All right. So first thing is I have a career changers playlist. There's a whole string of videos that help you with uh, kind of getting your mindset in order, figuring out if you're choosing the right stuff. I also have uh, techniques in there for how to win the job interview because you're at a disadvantage. Lots of times you don't have the, the, the requisite skills that somebody even at a more junior level who's got a little bit of experience in that career or that job has. But that's my recommendation. Definitely check out the playlist. And in the boot camp, I'm, ho I'm hoping this... Uh, that this that this works, but this is a woman who desperately wanted to change careers, and she waited, waited, waited. She joined the boot camp, and she got back to me um, when I sent out one of my meetup emails. But she said, "Thanks to your guidance of an inspiring coach, I came out the other side with my only regret that I didn't do it sooner." With your passion and expertise, I'm now enjoying more time than ever with my my two boys and so on, and my husband, and much to our surprise, we didn't have to sacrifice our financial security to do it. I never thought I'd find a career with those perks, plus actually love what I'm doing and feeling valued. And I'll, I would tell you that you need, to, that is a great story, and I have lo if you keep your eye on your email, you're gonna see other testimonials and stories from people like Stacy that did this. You can do this. If you're coming back, whether you had a health issue, for all of you stay-at-home parents that want to make a pivot and return to the workforce, for any of you that have a gap for whatever, maybe you went traveling, maybe you needed to do something, maybe you needed to take care of a sick parent or, uh, or an elderly parent or a sick child or whatever, you can do it. You can do it. it like You got to get rid of those limitations. That's a bunch of nonsense. You got to forget that stuff. The reality is people are doing this stuff every single day. And I'm just showing you people that are in my boot camp. Imagine all the people in this world that like Stacy that are making this stuff happen. So keep keep that at it. But I'll, I would uh, watch my ch career changer playlist and I would also uh, watch a video and I'm not sure if it's in the playlist, but it's how to handle employment gaps. I would watch that as well. But that's a, that's a, that's a great one. Manoj, thank you, Andrew. Following your mentorship, clear two rounds of interview for technology director, third interview this Friday with business applications director on Teams, Skype. Please advise Manoj. Okay, so if you've been following my mentorship, you know that I got a ton of interviewing videos out there. Hopefully you're following those. There's an interview playlist. There's also a, an interview webinar called Three Keys to Ace Any Job Interview, and you can also get the interview intervention book. But one other thing that I would highly recommend is I have a video out there on how to ace the video interview. And I believe it's titled Video Interview Tips for Job Seekers. That is 20 minutes well spent. That would be my best advice. So I would watch that like maybe a time or two. And, and I would do everything that I say because I don't just talk about the delivery and all that other good stuff. I talk about the entire setup and how to come off on camera really well and all that good stuff. So check check that out. All right. Karina. Karina, got an interview Friday. Been asked to do a PowerPoint about my background. 
CV to present any advice. Do I focus more on the stories or a chronological walkthrough? Okay, Karina, good news for you. Thursday, at this time slot at 11 Central, I'm, I'm doing the give the presentation session on this. But I do want to give you something to think about before then. If you are giving a presentation on yourself, the presentation, I would still argue, should not be on you and should be on what happened as a result of you being you. So when I went to this company and this is what I was in charge of, this was the change for the customers, my team, the organization, and so on. Here are the benefits. I And I would work backwards. This is gold. I'm me. I worked here. This is what I did very quickly. I was a project manager in charge of the customer service projects, whatever. As a result of that and my duties, we achieved this. These benefits. We secured X more customers. We pr put methodologies in place we were more streamlined we saved money we whatever here's how i did that by implementing solutions that did this and then when i was at this job here's what happened and here were the benefits and the impacts so you are rolling uh are you actually karina i'm not sure if you are familiar with my resume template but if you're not familiar with my resume template i would get it and there are highlights in the top section below. There's a career profile and there's highlights. The highlights are about these major benefits that you've achieved at different organizations that you've been. What I'm saying about your presentation is I would make a highlight or highlights uh, in a walkthrough fashion that says, you know what, I, I, I basically I started here and I was very, you know, very quickly I raced through and then I got to here and so on. I probably would uh, do it in, I don't know if I do it in reverse chronological order like your resume reads or if you want to go from the beginning of time and kind of race through. Uh, I think either one of those is okay. Uh, maybe it's, you want to start at the beginning and kind of you know go through it because it's, it is on you. But I would talk very fast through my early stuff and I don't know how experienced you are uh, you know, if you're a 20 year person, I would really blitz through the first 10 years and say, this is the foundation for everything that's about now happened the last 10 years and something like that. So I was here and here and this is what I did. It was awesome. You know, worked with ex customers and then, but that really positioned me to do this brilliant work that I did over the last 10 years or something like that. And you could, you could, you could do that whether you're five and five or whatever, but I hope that helps. And the highlights, they are stories. And everything needs a story. Happy Halloween to you, Elizabeth. <laughs> Diana Dembski, love having you, my my uh, my boot camper and my fellow Chicagoan. Mm. Dr. Manisha, my dear, dear Andy, how does one greet a person who just walks in while in the middle of my presentation without interrupting my talk and also not ignoring the new arrival? Manisha, awesome question, as I would expect nothing less from you. Uh, so if I'm giving a presentation and somebody walks in, I nod and say, hello, and don't say anything, and then I keep going. And then at the end of my pitch, I say, hello, N nice to meet you. If something happens where you nod, you say, hello, you do not want to get disrupted, you are in the zone, right? You're in the flow person sits down, you're still given a pitch. If the person speaks before you have the opportunity to speak to that person and says something, make sure at that point, if, if, if somebody just blurts out a question, you don't know who this person is, I would say, great question. I'd love to answer that. What is your name? Hi, my name's Dr. Manisha Awesomeness. Okay, like that's what I would do. So really it's, it's you would address him, him or her right away or, or if they interrupt you or they get to you, they say something before you, you know, if they interrupt the presentation or whatever, that's how I would handle that. You don't, I wouldn't make a big thing out of it. I would, I would be like, yeah, no big deal. You know, you came in late, right? You couldn't even be here on time if for whatever reason. All right, Robertson, 
Uh, would it be appropriate to ask for receive water prior to the interview? It sure would. How about bringing a bottle of water just in case? Do not. My mouth gets dry. Okay, don't bring anything with you unless, unless they say, bring some coffee. Bring in whatever you want. Okay, they rarely will do that because if they're a good company and you came in, first thing I would say to you is, would you like any water or coffee or tea or whatever you drink? I mean, that's it. Don't, like, I'm shocked when somebody doesn't offer me something and what I will always do if I'm thirsty and I know I'm going to be in there for an hour and I know how I get, uh, I do get, I, I, you know, I drink two gallons of water a day and I'm still always thirsty. So I, uh, I would say, you know what, would it be okay? Can I, can I grab a cup of water? And then, you know, they'll tell you, well, there's a bottle, there's a kitchenette, there's a whatever, but I would not bring it in. I would not bring it in. No extras. Uzoma. Hey, hi, Andy. Just got back from my fourth interview for a company. Awesome. Which was a test assessment. I think it was the worst of all four, but it wasn't terrible. Just not great. Is there anything I can do to focus them on my strengths and my ability to make up any shortcomings? Uzoma, first things first, let's get their response. From the, uh, from the, the tests, they might not even ever say anything about them. A lot of companies... They don't even, like, I, we used to have companies that I always used to yell at that they would have too many tests, and, that, and, and half the time, they would never say anything to me or the candidate about the tests themselves. Sometimes they would say, oh, that candidate cheated great. That candidate, he really crushed it. I wouldn't, let's not worry. Let's not worry. And yes, you, could, you can talk about what you are. Those tests are ridiculous. I've commented on this so much about these tests and how I, I think they're really irrelevant. All right, Rochelle, Andy, you're so inspiring. Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, so 50 questions in the interview. I know you recommend that many, but can you explain how they'll have time and patience to answer that many? Rochelle, they're not supposed to answer 50 questions. You're supposed to have the 50 questions, and you're supposed to prioritize them and siphon them down based on priority that you need to know them, based on the interview or who you're speaking with. So if I'm speaking with the big dogs, I'm asking them big dog questions. When I'm speaking with the HR uh, guy, I'm, I'm asking him HR stuff and culture stuff and that kind of stuff. When I'm speaking with my peers, I'm talking about the role, their areas of expertise, how we're going to work well together and that kind of stuff. So you're not, you're not going one through 50. And then what is going to happen is you're not going to get through all those. That's okay. You got to sequence them. One thing about, about the boot camp. Uh, I give you a template that is an 86-line spreadsheet that has all of the most common things that people care about, the what's, the needs, the requirements that you, an individual, care about. I gathered data from like 12,000 people talking to them, not surveys, but like talking to them, and I gathered data on what it is they wanted, so I put that in a spreadsheet. And I highlighted like the 15, 16 most common things. Then I broke them all down. And then I showed you what they are by definition. And we give you a template for you to go in and fill in your questions and highlight the things that are important to you. And then if there are other things that, heaven forbid, I missed, you can add those in. But then what you need to do is you need to prioritize that sheet, weight it, look at what's smart to ask who. And you can actually label, oh, I'm going to ask that to the HR person. I'm going to ask that to the executive team. I'm going to ask that to my boss. I'm going to ask that to my whatever. And so I give you all that. So it's a fast start. And while it looks daunting, and people think, well, it's 86 lines. Well, you don't need to care about all 86 lines. You can black out half the spreadsheet if you wanted to. But it's is it not way easier to look at a list that's already contained and developed and just say, that's cool, that's not, that's cool, that's not? Do you have any idea how hard it is when I hand you a blank sheet of paper and say, fill it out? And people are like, oh, I don't know what I want. That's right. That's a big problem. So I want to make sure that you have those assets. But... It'll get you to 50 super fast. You don't need to ask all 50. And then you ask all of them throughout the entire process. And then if you get to the end and they want to give you an offer and you and you still have questions, you say to them, I have a few more questions. That's it. All right, Rochelle, is it the kiss of death if you don't have a LinkedIn profile? Uh, but if you do and if you don't have an... 
uh, wait, both if you do and if you don't have a networking referral. So, Rochelle, I think you are at a disadvantage. I would not use the words kiss of death, but if you are in corporate America, so not everybody's in corporate America. A lot of you are in corporate America, right? I was in corporate America. You should have one. And for so many reasons. It's vital to be able to create your network. You want to have visibility to places you might want to go. You want to have a sensational brand that you build about yourself. When they look and they go, oh my God, look at that. How awesome is she and what a pretty picture and all that good stuff. So I like it. Um, it tre- do, do, True story. When all the boot campers come into the program, to the bootcamp program, they sign up, they get an email that says, hey, here's how you get through everything. Meaning, this is the way around the house. It's a big mansion, okay? There's a lot of stuff, a lot of rooms. Kind of go through it, so on and so forth. Make sure you're okay. Got some bonuses, got all this stuff. We'll see you on Friday. The next day, they get a, a story that says, you know, please share your story with me. And what happens is, is I'm looking through all the people that join. So when you join, guess what? I get an alert, I see that so-and-so joined. So then what I do when I get their story is I look them up on LinkedIn. So I wanna see their pretty face. And it bums me out when I don't see a picture. Okay, well actually, I don't, we've had a few boot campers join that didn't have any LinkedIn profiles. But, so it just totally bums me out. And there's even an opportunity to put your picture in the Mile Walk Academy system so that I can see you when, I'm, when we're communicating, which is really cool. I love that. First off, and then think about that. I feel more connected, and then I remember your name, and I remember your backstory, because I asked them to send me their story. Like, how'd you find me? How'd you get here? What's going on? What's the problem? I want to be able to support you. All of these things that I'm going through, it's the same kind of thing when an employer is looking to hire you. And most most uh, recruiters, HR people, and hiring officers, they will look at your LinkedIn profile. And the other thing is, Uh, We statistically know that if you have a LinkedIn profile, you have an 8% chance of being found and hired. 8%. Think about that. You've got about a 3% chance of being noticed in the applicant tracking system. Noticed. Not hired. Noticed. You got an 8% chance of being hired by just having a LinkedIn profile, for being by being found by somebody. So uh, so that's what I would say. I want the eight points. All right, Wendy Bader. So I love this. All right, Wendy B. Hi, Andy. What are some body language cues that we should look for from the interviewer, especially c- c- cues that tell us that the interview is not going well so we can possibly turn it around? So biggest, biggest body language cues when the okay so so we just got done talking for 20 minutes on all the things that you should do the interviewer should do the same things that's first second thing is when i'm speaking to somebody i'm laser focused on their face because those eyes they don't lie the facial express not usually the facial expression is very, very important for you to keep an eye on. Is the eyebrow going up? Are they puzzled? Is that kind of strange? That's kind of odd. You know, if you're seeing that, that's not good, okay? Now, it's not really hard for you to catch the body language, but if you're getting the kind of the lean backs and the, the, you know, the crossed arms and the, you you know, that kind of stuff, that's pretty obvious. But I think the stoic face is a little bit more of an indicator uh, that that it might not be going well. Now you also have to be quick on your feet to determine if that person is just that way. Like we would send people into some clients and they would say, "Geez, so and so is just so hard to read." I'm like, "Yeah, don't worry about it. You crushed it." You know what I mean? Like we just know the guys like that or the gals like that. So, but you might you don't have that advantage at least not most of the time. So anyway, I hope uh, hope that helps. Denise, I wonder if you're Denise Maboot Camper. Uh, Andy, do you have any tips to avoid the deer in the headlights? Look, I feel like I often give this look and try to manage it by looking away and gives my eyes a rest. Denise, we just shot this Thursday in the confidence session. That's my answer to the deer in the headlights look. Check it out. Uh, The replay is still up. 
and it's like the first 15 minutes but I would check that out and if you if you have seen it I would check it out again just it's 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 my answer that is my 100% Susan Kelly I would love to have a job search buddy in my area Susan Kelly you're welcome to buddy up with anybody if you are in the job search boot camp we are going to try to push that a bit more. We actually have a group that's uh, on a WhatsApp app. Uh, Deborah Sari, who is an awesome boot camper, who's got three interviews this week, apparently is crushing it thanks to the boot camp and the WhatsApp thing. And maybe you can look her up. And, and I don't, uh, I don't think you're in the boot camp. I'm usually pretty good with the names uh, of the boot campers, even if you don't attend the live sessions. But I can't remember. I don't think you're in. Jose Velasquez. If the chair you are seated on during the interview is uncomfortable, should I not move too much or how do I uh, do not uh, tend to send the wrong message? Actually, awesome, awesome uh, question. If the chair that you sit in, it, if there are choices of the chair and you are going into the room at the same time, I want you to... I want you to, when you get in the chair, before you get in the chair, if the chair is like one of those swivel chairs or whatever, push down on the chair to make sure that the chair doesn't sink or any of that stuff. And you want to make sure that you are at the right height and that you are also at the height of the interviewer. Do not be sitting down like this and do not be dwarfing them, okay? So you want it as much as possible, if you can. I don't want you to look at 10 chairs. I want you to just try to kind of feel it. Okay, you want to be like I'm a short guy. Well, first off, I don't really care. I don't really care if you sit ten feet over me. But, but for me, normally I'm able to find a chair where we're looking eyeball to eyeball, which is what I prefer. Not because I have an inferiority complex. It's just like it's easier to do that. I don't look up, right? So if you have the option and you have a second, I would try that. If you get in a chair that's wildly uncomfortable and there's other chairs, then try those. If there's not, then do your best. Then do your best. And uh, I would just, you know, there's a lots of different kinds of chairs that are in these offices. Most of them are usually pretty comfortable, but, you know, it's hard to say. Shar P, if you are sent a link for a phone interview, are you obligated to use video or is dialing in? Okay, well, if it's a phone interview, then I would use the phone. I would not use the internet, uh, even if your phone is a voice over IP. I would use the phone and you are not obligated. However, the thing that, Shar, the thing that concerns me about this is they should be crystal clear that this is a phone call or this is a, this is a video interview. So I would just, I would actually ask them. All right. Cisco, I have a friend who is referring me to a recruiter who will no doubt ask for a resume. I won't know if there's a specific role. Should I make it general? I'm using your format. Cisco, couple things. Number one, uh, the words recruiter will contact you and who will no doubt never belong in the same sentence. So even though, so I get dozens of referrals every day from people who say, Andy's a recruiter, you should contact him, who I never call. Has nothing to do with those people, has everything to do with the searches that we're working on. If you're an accountant and I'm working, looking for a project manager, I'm not going to call you, okay? I don't care who referred you to me. So, cause I just don't have the time. Otherwise I can't help you and answer your questions in the boot camp. All right. So, so, so that's, or, or work on my searches for my other clients or my clients. So that's the first thing. Second thing is I would use the resume format that you developed. And now you've been in the boot camp only a few days. So I don't know if you've gone through module two, whatever you do, go through module two, the main session and the extra session on the resume stuff. And you might even want to go into the Q and A uh, as well, or uh, there is a there is an extra session, boot camper session, in the Q and A section of the boot of the boot camp program, where I talk about uh, there's a there's a uh, a Q and A section that we did as part of a resume writing masterclass. I would look at that. I would go through. I answered like 66 questions. It was awesome. I would check that out and I would make sure that my resume is in order. Then I would send them, the recruiter, the best resume that I have based on the typical project or, or sorry, typical role or, or the dream role that I have. And then if you, in what you could say is, uh, I'm giving you this resume. I have additional experience depending on what you're looking for. 
I won't know, you know, to share that with you until we until we connect live. And if at this time you don't have anything that's suitable for me, I'm happy to network with you and and so on and so forth. I'm assuming that when you say referring you to a recruiter, uh, you mean a third party recruiter. If I totally miss that and it's a corporate recruiter, uh, same I would same thing. I probably just wouldn't say a thing about the networking. Okay. Um, all right, folks, I am out of time. Couple, couple things real, real quick. Uh, the boot camp is, uh, is starting Friday. We, the deadline's 11. If you're on the fence, you got a 30 day guarantee. No one returns the thing because it's, it's that good. I could say that with a straight face and I would challenge you to find anything remotely i capital bold word remotely close to the quality and the quantity of content that's in there and then add the support add the amount of live time i'm with you it's like 60 some odd hours of live time with me throughout the year not to mention having me at your fingertips when you have questions and needing to be able to to get to get answers in the in the support in the support queue so check it out. It's awesome. Tons and tons of success stories. Keep an eye out on your emails. I'm going to be sending you just a couple more for the deadline for Friday, but I'd love to have you. And if you're smart, you'll get in right away so you can go through some of it, kind of get a feel for it, and then come Friday armed with your questions. It's going to be a ton of, going to be a ton of fun. Okay. All right. I will see you Thursday on Presentations. <laughs>